Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and today we're going to look at the addition of a calcium reactor and DIY calc reactor to this 90 gallon system. So why did I choose to go with a calcium reactor and a calc reactor over the bulk reef supply two-part that I was using? Well, unfortunately, I was struggling with the bulk reef supply two-part. Um, as you can see, my tank is modestly stocked. I mean, it is not packed. There's plenty of room for more coral in there. But unfortunately, I couldn't keep up with the calcium demands in this system using the two-part from Bull Creek. Um, I was dosing up to about 250 mils of calcium and alkalinity a day. Obviously, I was set to what would give me the most bang for my buck. Unfortunately, doing big doses like that wasn't working out. Um, my alkalinity fell as low as 6.4 during the big doses, and it was tough to get my calcium over about 370 at the end. So, the big reason I believe that was going on is because I was manually dosing. I was having to dose once a day using big doses because I had a fair amount of consumption in this tank. And for you guys running the big SPS tanks, I can't imagine how much you're having to dose to really satisfy your coral. But for me, I had to upgrade. I didn't have a choice. So it was either dosing pumps or calcium reactor. So I went with the calcium reactor because if I went with the dosing pumps, everything said and done, it was going to be almost as much money as the calcium reactor. And I didn't think it was going to be quite as effective as far as stability goes. And I didn't, and I don't think long run it'll be cheaper because once you start having to dose a lot, you're having to spend like 80 bucks every three months on dosing calcium and alkalinity. Where with a calcium reactor, I am able to buy a large thing of aragonite for about 25 bucks and CO2, which is like 12, 15 bucks to swap out the cylinders at the local fire extinguisher supply store. So that's the route I went. And so far it's working okay. Um, but let's take a look at the calcium reactor and the DIY calc reactor downstairs in the basement and we'll go from there. So thanks for indulging my son on that. He just had to be in the video. Um, ever since I got this thing, he has had to show me how it works every time it comes down here. So kind of fun. But anyways, this is my Coral Life Calcium Reactor that I purchased. Um, on the box, it claims it will do a 500 gallon system. I really kind of doubt that. I mean, I've got a 90 gallon system and this thing's running full bore right now. So if you're buying this, you're probably not going to be wanting to use this thing for bigger than about a 100 gallon system. But it does work. Um, it's probably the cheapest calcium reactor on the market and probably for good reason it it's an okay calcium reactor it's not great it's got its issues um but I'll give you kind of a little overview of how it works and kind of let you know some of the stuff that i don't like about it um so first of all you have the water intake here and that's supposed to run all the way to this thing well Unfortunately, I came home one day from work and the water wasn't flowing through. I think there was an air bubble in here somewhere. So I tried to remove this line from here just to make sure it was clear. And of course, this broke off. As it turns out, um, this line is glued onto here and this line was glued on down here. Why they would glue something on when you know you have to service it is beyond me. But that's what they did. So if you get one, just know that these are glued on. So I glued this piece back together. 
I haven't tried using it again because I ran the line just directly down to the intake of the pump. And it's been working perfect ever since. So I'm not touching it as long as it's working. You can also see here, there must be a little tiny leak going on because you can see the salt creep as it's coming down. Um, and it's okay. But anyways, that's where the water goes into the system. The <clears throat> pump pushes the water through here. And here's where the CO2 line comes in. This is where the bubble counter is, and this is where the CO2 is supposed to mix with the water to create your acidic water to break down the calcium in the main chamber. So what's going on here is carbon dioxide is entering from this carbon cylinder. Yes, it's not pretty, but I went ahead and went to the local fire extinguisher store and just did their swap out system so you get one of these very cheaply that way and then when you need a new one you just take it in give it to them and they give you another one makes it really easy to do but i bought the <clears throat> milwaukee dual pressure regulator with the control solenoid and the bubble counter i love the bubble counter i would not want one of these without the bubble counter right there it just makes it so easy to see what's going on and to adjust it but it's got the, you can adjust your, sorry, you have your gauge here to see how much pressure is in the tank. You have your gauge here to show how much pressure is going out. And of course, this knob here is your adjustment. And then this is your solenoid. And this solenoid is controlled by this pH controller. This is the Milwaukee MC122 pH controller and it seems to be working really well. Um, basically, you just set your pH for where you want it to be, and if it goes above that, it turns this solenoid on, which puts the carbon dioxide into the calcium reactor. When your pH goes below what you have it set at, it goes ahead and shuts off, and it just keeps your pH right about where you want it. Um, I've only had one problem with it. One day this thing stuck shut. It was a one-time deal, unplugged it, replugged it in, and it worked. So we'll see how that goes right now. I've got no other problems with it than a one-time shutdown deal. <clears throat> but anyways, the carbon dioxide comes down from the tank into here. There's a check valve on there to keep carbon dioxide from flowing back. Um, and then the water is circulated through the calcium reactor using this pump. This pump also is what draws the water into the system. So it just creates a bit of a siphon and pulls it in. It's, actually it's this hose right here. And then you have your pH probe here. The pH probe sits in the water down here and monitors your pH. And that's what's sending the signal to the controller to turn it on and turn it off. And then the water exits the calcium reactor through here. And you can see back here, it's just a constant stream. Um, I tried this thing on the slower, lower settings and it's not able to pull my calcium up to a high enough level. Um, one thing to know about the calcium reactor is you're basically um, dosing calcium and alkalinity at the same dose, so equal parts of each. So you're gonna bring both up at the same level, at least at the, that's the theory. But oddly enough, when I set all of this up, I just turn it on and ran. I didn't increase calcium alkalinity either of that, right? So I was at 6.4 and 3.70. It did a great job bringing my alkalinity up. It brought it up into the mid nines without an issue, but the calcium just stayed dead. I am not, for the life of me, understanding why the alkalinity would go up and the calcium would just stay solid. But anyways, I went ahead and dosed the calcium and we're at 4.20 now and it's holding. So. We'll see how it goes, but um, yeah, this thing's running full out on my 90 gallon system. So I really wouldn't recommend this for 
anything bigger than probably about a 100 gallon system. And truly, it's a kind of a cheap calcium reactor. If you need something really cheap and your budget's like mine, it will work. But if you can afford a better one, definitely buy a better one. I mean, it's just, the plastics are, it, it's inexcusable the way they break and the way they're glued on. Um, this thing needs to be completely serviceable. It's for a saltwater aquarium. So, you know, minimum grade stuff. I guess you get minimum grade quality. But, you know, it's working. So, of course... When you run a calcium reactor, you're gonna lower the pH. Because as you can see, I was running my pH about six, seven. You need to keep it in the calcium reactor between about 6.5 and 6.8. So by lowering the pH of the water, you lower the pH of what goes in, right? So it's just simple math, right? I got low pH over here, when I add it to my system, it's gonna lower the pH of the system. So to combat that, I went ahead and did a DIY calcium reactor. Now, I didn't actually build this. This came with the tank when I bought it. The previous owner of the tank built the calc reactor. So, here it is. A um, Couple minor issues I had with it. Um, was the plumbing here. This is where the water enters the calc reactor. And as you can see, it's low down in there, right? So I ended up running this hose all the way up here and putting a valve up here to limit what goes in. This valve is just on here as a support for up. I had it laying around and it worked out. Um, but I basically put all this up high so I didn't have to use a check valve. Um, when I got it, it had a check valve on it, and I will not use a check valve if I don't have to. They're just too likely to fail. But basically, what's going on is I have water in my auto top off, so that's RODI, and it pumps up to here, and then this valve slows it because it just runs a little too fast. So it limits the amount of water going into the calc reactor. So then, the calc reactor has a couple gallons of water in it, and it's still fresh water at this point, and it'll always be fresh water. You never want salt water in your calc reactor. But the water comes in here, and in the bottom of this is some calc. And every day, I come down here, and I turn this pump on, which stirs the calc, and that is a Mag 5 but you can see basically it's all built in here the plumbing for it but <clears throat> there's a hose leading up here for your intake which goes into the pump and then a hose here which expels the water and it does a really nice job stirring it but what i do is i come down here every day once a day i mean it's no big deal for me to service my tank and I add a little bit of water to my tank to ensure that the auto top off won't come on. I turn this pump on and then it stirs. So the calc solution stirs and you end up with this heavily saturated calc solution with lots of calc in the water. Now we don't want that heavily saturated calc solution to go into the tank. We want all of this clear calc solution up here to go into the tank. So by turning the water on, it gives it time for everything to settle back down. So then throughout the day, when the auto top off kicks on, it's pulling water from this section here and it's pumping it into my tank. And so far it's doing a really nice job keeping my pH up. I was hit I hit a pH as low as 7.8 before I added this calc reactor and now I'm holding 8.2 solid. So I've got the calcium reactor running full bore and then I have my calc reactor working with it and basically all I'm doing with this thing is buffering pH. And for me it's working 
extremely well. So, I hope you like my new setup. Um, the Core Life calcium reactor is a little bit of a disappointment for me. The Milwaukee controller and the um, Milwaukee dual pressure regulator seem to be working pretty well. And I gotta say, the best thing about all of this has been the DIY calcium reactor. I did make some modifications, like I added the Mag 5 and I changed where the drain was running so that I didn't have to use a check valve. But beyond that, that's working really well. So we will continue to watch how this goes. Um, hopefully it will maintain my calcium at the levels I want over the long run. But thanks for watching Wild High Reefers and we'll see you on the next episode. Um, if, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.